The following episode of the Comics and Crypto podcast is for informational purposes only, and anything expressed by the hosts or their guests is solely their opinion. This podcast does not constitute financial advice, and anyone wishing to invest should seek their own independent financial or professional help. Have fun and enjoy the show. Hi, I'm Sean O'Hare, and I know comics. Hi, I'm Spencer Vogel, and I know crypto. Hi, I'm Kevin Lee Loader, and I don't know sh. This is the Comics and Crypto Podcast. Comics and Crypto, Crypto and Comics, Collectors World in a Digital Age. Comics and Crypto, Crypto and Comics is where the next billionaires will be rich. Comics and Crypto. What is up, BB fam? Thanks so much for joining us in today's episode. Today we are joined by the incredible, wonderful, Brendan Cherry, creator of CherryCharts.com, big friend of the podcast and such an amazing asset to the community, bud. Good, thanks so much for coming by. Thanks so much for having me, man. Hey, Brendan. We, hey, we, buddy. We've been talking about doing this for a while. I'm so excited to finally bring it to fruition. We've been working oh, on so many God. things, so there's so mm-hmm. much to talk about today. Oh, yeah, so much to talk about. So uh, Sean, Sean promised me that, uh, once, once that once Slabs came out that I would be allowed to tell a story about how he got started and he promised me I could uh, I could start it off with that. So I'm super, super excited to be here uh, with the two of you guys. You guys are legends. Uh, we've, been, we've been chatting it up since, I mean, since the very beginning. It's, it's so nice. I can't believe we haven't done um, a podcast together yet, but um, you know, it's, it's finally happening. Uh, the first so of many, I'm sure. <laughs> What's that? So the first of many, I'm sure. Yes, I hope so. So it's, you know, we've been, you've definitely been, uh, working together for a long time so it's nice to finally be uh doing something like this together um but yeah so i really wanted to start this start this podcast with some good energy uh and and share the story of how we got slabs rolling uh because it's probably one of the funnier stories that i have like since (laughs) i've joined uh since i joined vivi and uh it, it just every time i think about it just like my smile like every time um i think about this story so i'm set i want to set the scene for you guys I'm in Sri Lanka. Um, it's two days in. I my body is completely thrown off. Um, my my biological clock hates me. It's it's like three o'clock in the morning. I'm sitting around. I don't know what to do with myself. The gym opens at six, so I'm in the gym, and I might be like ten minutes into my workout, um, and I get like fifteen messages from Sean, like, <laughs> and I'm like, all right, fifteen messages. These aren't these aren't just fifteen messages. This is 15 voice messages from Sean. And he's like, I had this crazy idea. Like, let me tell you about it. And he goes, I don't know, like, like me, me and Spencer, like all we see is these low mint comics. People want these low mint comics. Low mints are so important. And like, people love the low mints because, you know, it's rarity, right? We don't have a grading. We don't have grading anymore with physical comics. There's a people, there's a reason people like it. They like to distinguish value. Uh, especially when when you have 5, 10, 20, 30, 50,000 of a comic, people want to have value to derive beyond just the comic itself. And he's like, dude, we see this trend in the market and we got to share it with the community. We're kind of pointing it out, but we want to do a cool way where people can really show off what they have, the value in a way that's that's beautiful, right? In a way that people can throw it on their socials, right? Um, and so he's like, I don't know if it's too crazy. I don't know what's going to take for us to get there. But if there's even a chance that you want to do this with me, like, please let me know. And I'm in the middle of my workout. Like, I'm like, yes, <laughs> this is amazing. Like, I don't know how we're going to do this. I don't know what's going to take to make this happen. We're doing it. Like, we got to make it happen. And so that was kind of the inception of slabs. Um, you know, it obviously started with uh, with some sort of grading and, and we've moved over to the data, but we are no longer grading. Yeah, but but we got we got the slabs, and it's been so it's been such an incredible journey to to kind of get to the point where 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 we're sharing this with the community right on you know anybody can create it and it's kind of the despite the fact that it doesn't have the grading that we originally envisioned it still has that same energy right it still has people really excited about comics something that people were incredibly incredibly speculative about in the beginning and I'll be the first to say I wasn't too sure about how. Uh, comics were going to be embraced by the community in the beginning. I was talking to the comic collectors I knew. Um, I was talking to, uh, I was I was doing my own research. I was trying to figure out like, does this have a place? Is this just something cool where, you know, I knew that that Marvel had this service where you could read the comics. So, you know, it wasn't necessarily clicking for me in the beginning. And 
you know, by the time that, that Sean had reached out to me in December, I, I was starting to see it, but you know, it's, it's become very apparent that these low mins that people are just really excited about just having a piece of history without having to spend $8 billion on some of these really incredible pieces uh, that are, that are from the thirties. Um, so yeah, just had to, had to intro with that story because it's, it's been a long journey to finally get here and, uh, and share it with the community. <laughs> oh man. And so everyone knows Brendan cr created the system with him as an, him and his team. Like they built the system out entirely themselves. Like they've done an incredible job making something that's so easy to use and people are going crazy over it, man. People are loving the system. This it's, it's, it's been a blast. Seeing yeah, at the time, at the time of this community. episode, we've, we've have what is it, over 6,000 Seven, slabs 7, created 000. almost yeah, 7,000 7, slabs. 7, 7,000. Yeah, slab. Incredible. Yeah, we've had, I think we had about first day. It was crazy. <laughs> I, uh, I think it was like 1500 slabs on the first day and I'm getting messages. Like at times I'm not expecting to get messages. Like guys, we have a problem. Like <laughs> the amount of bandwidth that we're currently using, like, like are just, it's just good through the roof because it was just like, people were slabbing up their stuff. And I was like, Oh, this is awesome. My feed, my feed is still getting, I'm still getting likes and stuff from from the post that we did originally with people still commenting their slides. It's been like the best feeling ever to just see so much community engagement. Mm -hmm. Everybody like there's, I don't, I don't think I've seen a single comment yet of somebody that doesn't like being able to do it because it's just an opportunity to, to show off something that you love. I mean, all of us, all of us here that have been here a long time are collectors. And so, you know, having that opportunity to just put in your information and get a nice aesthetic of something that you just love collecting and seeing just this continued engagement with it has been the best feeling in the world. Um, yeah. I know you guys have been getting a lot of engagement on Twitter. Um, I see it in terms of engagement on the website and I see it in terms of, you know, being tagged in on this stuff. And it's been such a, it's been such a pleasure to, to get like a whole community rally behind uh, just a cool way to, to show, show something special off. And this is exactly what we've been wanting the whole time. Just create something fun that the community can use for, for free. And they really yeah. can enjoy and connect. You know, it's been really, really cool. And especially seeing some like special like mint numbers on a slab. Oh, yeah. Like it's been mm -hmm. really fun seeing, seeing all this come to fruition. All the things we've been talking about for the past couple months. 100%. So diving into the actual cherry chart system, uh, we should talk about maybe some spec stuff, maybe some data. Oh yeah, that's perfect. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so one of the one of the things that I think is really interesting, and it's a it's a very interesting dynamic because it's um, it takes kind of knowledge, it takes the knowledge that you guys provide to the community, super valuable, um, and and it it kind of is it's kind of like a, I almost want to compare it to stock picking, right? Where somebody gives you the information you need to know, like Apple, right? Leader, Amazon, Tesla, these the it's like knowing that these stocks are important, but they're but not everybody knows it, right? If you if you're not if you don't have that background knowledge, you're not you're not a comic person yourself. You don't follow these guys. You, you guys don't listen. You guys aren't following them. You're not following sleeping some other guys that are really awesome people in this community. You have absolutely no idea. It's not just based off of time. It's not just based off of a specific character because, I mean, we all know, we've seen how many amazing Spider-Man, like amazing Spider-Mans have been released. Um, it's, it, you kind of have to know what you're looking for. It's, it's like a hidden stock picking. But the other really unique portion of, of this space is it's not just about having that knowledge because once you guys release Hoddle or Sell, anybody that's on top of their game is staying in touch with what's going on with these comics. They, everybody knows, right? And if it was as easy as just knowing, everybody could make money off of comics immediately. Um, the next step to that is knowing when to get into it. It's knowing the market trends. It's knowing, you know, it goes up and then it goes down, or um, this is a good price point, or um, sometimes you got to look for, for, you know, this is a really good mint number, even though it's just an uncommon, it's not a secret rare. It's it's a little bit, it's a little bit more fine tuned. Once you have the knowledge, that's great. You're, you're 50, 60% of the way there, but the other 40, 50% is kind of keeping an eye on the market, understanding what's going on, um, understanding that there's, there's another element to it. Yeah. You can get in and some of these things, your Marvel comics, number one, and your FF five and your FF one, these are great things to hold in long term. You know, if you're really engaged in the project and you have the same vision as a lot of, as the three of us here, 
you know, you, you see long-term potential in these assets. And if you get in now or you get in tomorrow, you get a week, a month, they're like, you, you believe very truly that these have long-term value that's going to, that are going to have, gonna have returns for you. But it's also an opportunity, like when is the best time to get in? So I wanted to ask you guys, you guys know your stuff really, really well about the comics themselves. What other type of information do you guys think about, apply, look at, consider, uh, maybe you do some research on? What are the things do you guys use in your day-to-day -day when you're investing on the app itself to know when is a good time to buy um, into these grails, into maybe you're just, just looking at your top 50? Well, it's really tough knowing <laughs> right now. I mean, like, being in a bear market, you know, we, I don't think we expected it to drop like this. So this market is so new. It's really tough to really know when a great time to buy in a uh, long-term, but having a system like cherry charts, tracking the data, trying to identify trends that helps tremendously. But uh, like for me, it's always tough, like, especially on drop days to buy in heavy into a comic on uh, some comics, mm -hmm. because typically if the comic isn't really, really big, you'll see its peak on drop day and then it'll slow to slowly decline when yeah. other comics drop that are bigger. Um, that's one of my big, biggest pieces of advice. Another thing that I, I will say that if a comic is a grail, typically on drop days, sometimes the best time to, to buy into it. Yeah, usually <laughs> or, is. Or if it's, or if it's yeah. massive IP like Star Wars. Like mm -hmm. some people do call Star Wars a grail comic, but for our, our definition, it's not a grail comic because our, mm -hmm. our definition of a grail comic is a comic that's worth half a million dollars or more in its highest grade. That, that term is very subjective, but that's our definition as investors. That's good. That's good to point out too, that, you know, what you consider a grail having some sort of metric so people understand, like, it's not, it's not just arbitrary. It's not, it's not Spencer's favorite comic when he was 15. And, and so that's like his favorite thing. You guys are, you guys are applying metrics to, to what you guys consider grails. And I think that's really important that people are kind of aware of why you consider it to be a grail. It's yeah, a community-based yeah. thing. There's a reason that people are willing to spend um, half a million dollars on it. Yeah. yeah. And it's definitely not end all be all, but you know, we, we definitely pay a lot of attention to real world values of books when we're looking at investing in these things. Um, so like we use a lot of data from like go collect for, for example, to get a lot of the information about farm fair market values for the comics that we're, we're looking at investing in. Um, so for us, you know, looking at that and also looking at like the total market caps of, you know, some of these physical comics and how that compares to the, the market caps, of the digital ones, and, you know, seeing where there could be potential for room to grow between the two. I mean, there's a couple of things, a couple of different things that we take a look at when we're looking at the data surrounding these things. It's really important to reference real life value because it's not just yeah. about the value, but it's also about the scarcity and popularity. Cause that's really at the end of the day, what we're looking at this thing, these comics are incredibly popular and they're very scarce or, you know, like ultimate fallout four, I always reference this a lot because there's a lot of them. It's not particularly scarce, but it's an incredibly popular. And so the value popular. of that comic is just going up in value. You're seeing a nine eight. I remember a couple of years ago it was a four hundred dollar nine eight, graded comic, and now we're sitting at thirty five hundred dollars, and it's still rising. Wow. And there are over wow. I think three or four thousand nine point eights alone, alone just nine point eights. Like there's a which lot, massive, of which comics. is a massive supply for nine point eights. Yeah, which is ridiculous. Yeah, I mean typically that's, like, that's, that's insane that there's that many at nine point eight, yeah. and they still have that value. It really goes to show the mm -hmm. demand. Yeah, uh, ex exactly. That comic in particular. So you guys, so you definitely are considering a, a bunch of factors. One of the things that I thought was super cool, I, I very, very distinctly remember because um, we were going to start looking at the VV market cap data was um, you guys had reached out. I think Spencer was looking to try and calculate the market caps and the gap between these two market caps was just absolutely unreal to me. I couldn't believe how completely, like how much room there was to potentially grow. You know, people reference the physical comics and say, nobody will ever want to spend more on the digital than the physical. And to that, I say, I've seen a couple of comics that have gone higher than the physical version, but let's, let's assume that that's, that's not the, those aren't the, the, the grails that we're looking at. We're, that's not the Marvel comics, number one. But what I do see, and, and people say, there's no way they'll ever be the same, that the market cap will ever be the same. Fine, maybe you're right. But what we're seeing is like, it's like a 99% margin there right now. It's not, what if, what about 10%? Would people be willing to spend 10% of the overall market cap for FF1 or, or Marvel Comics 1? Like, that doesn't sound too crazy to me. 10%, 20%, 30%. We're not, we're at 
one, two, three, five, seven percent of the market cap for some of these really awesome things. And that was a big, that was a big thing when you guys had reached out to me and said, like, are we looking at market caps at all? Like, are people like what what's what is what is that that comic worth in terms of the whole community? And it's it's really mind-bending to see how kind of early, right? Like the amount of availability for some of these things, some people are kind of holding on to them, a lot of them, right? And so when people start holding on to, especially when they were like four gems for Marvel Comics, I know you guys scooped up a couple then, um, you know, like one or two probably. Uh, like those were, now they're, what is it, a couple hundred now? Mm-hmm. Well, the commons are around, yeah, I think around 150. It's, it's in a slight dip, but it, it reached as high as almost a thousand gems. I mean, it was, yeah, yeah. Point. It was crazy. But that's a perfect yeah. example of a comic that, I mean, I, I personally, I admit, I undervalued that comic. I was so fixed on FF1, which again, guys, I can't, I can't, I'm not under, I'm not underselling <laughs> FF1. I'll come back to that in a yeah. second. But Marvel Comics 1 has tremendous historical value, but VB has brought pop culture value because it's the first ever Marvel comic NFT. And that's right. very significant long-term. It's going to have tremendous value because of that. And there's also only 64 physical copies on the CGC census. There's, it doesn't exist. You cannot get one. So how's it going to translate? Well, you can get one in the digital space. And even right. over time, that's going to reflect. It's going to be very hard to get. It's going to drive, drive up the value, especially because of the accessibility. That's the biggest factor, right? You can literally buy, sell, and trade this anywhere around the world instantly. In the future, using crypto, which is going to be wild. It's going to be wild. Which means so prices they, are going to be way higher when way people higher. are able to buy these things with crypto. Way higher. When these, yeah. these ETH wells are able to come in and yeah, just blow, blow ETH on, on a comic book, you know, yeah. game over. Absolutely. I mean, I, I, I yeah, always it, say, I always say when you're, when you start working with crypto, it's kind of like going to a casino, right? The second you're not seeing a dollar sign in front, in front of your transaction, especially imagine you walk into a casino and for just sitting around for 24 hours, your chips are now worth $2 instead of one. You guys spend your chips different. You're putting up your $5 <laughs> chip, even though it's, even if it's worth $10, if I tell you that if you sit in my casino for a week, all your chips are 10 times the value of what you put in. Are you going to stop sitting at the $5 table, even though you're actually putting $50 per hand at the blackjack table? Yeah, maybe, exactly. maybe you cash out, but maybe not, maybe not too. And that's, and that's part of, that's part of what's going on in that space is that people have people bought in at $35 Ethereum. And so they've got a hundred X they're spending Ethereum like they did back when it was worth $35 per ETH. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's such a good analogy, man. Oh, and I, I wanted to touch on something you just said, Sean, about Marvel Comics 1, FF1, and stuff like that. I think that for true collectors, the people that are really in the space, something that I didn't realize then that I think about now, it's it's also the emotion, right? It's not about, you know what happens in, in FF1. You know what happens in FF5. You know, you, know, you know the story. But there's something, like, there's only 64 Marvel Comics number one, like you just mentioned. That's, this is your only opportunity. You're, there's, for... Six, there's there's probably how many of those are actually available for sale i mean a couple yeah this is maybe one sale a year at most as a true collector saying that you have a licensed nft from the company that makes them and you can say that you own a piece of that history that's that's powerful that's that's emotional that's that's unique to someone that really is in that space as an and true a true collector like you guys are that's that's like a really awesome feeling to say like I actually own a piece of this history like I indisputably through the blockchain can prove I own a piece of this history and I would never ever in a million years have an opportunity to do that in any other circumstance unless I win the lottery. Yeah, yeah, and, and a great example going back to add to that, you know, we're looking at like Fantastic Four one, you know, and it's highest grade. There's three, there's two, I think two or three nine point sixes, and that's it, and they've never sold. So the people have gotten them graded and they've kept them and they don't want to sell them probably because they don't need the money. Right. But if one did sell, I'm beyond confident that would sell for over $8 million and it's probably going up every day in value. So if that sell hypothetically ever did happen, or which I hope it does, what would that do to the rest of the market specifically with FF one for the entire collection, but also for the digital counterparts, I would anticipate it probably do pre- help, help, help the comic significantly. Yeah. So that, that and again, it brings up the value and that's why they're, they're connected. Right. right. The value is there already. Yeah. It's, it's, it's about the mainstream, right? It's about, 
how it's about once people are, are using these more, once NFTs are be become more popular, more societal, it's, oh, okay, now we're starting to gear up to this space where digital ownership is a real thing. I mean, this concept of digital ownership, you ask somebody, can you own something on the internet? Their first answer might be yes, but if you ask them to explain it, how they actually own it, it's not really, not like you don't really own it. And that's the really cool thing is this, is this idea of digital ownership of, Definitely. of something that we know has that, that really high value. And I think we're also going to be really surprised. I, I think there's going to be a lot of times where these digital comics are going to sell for a way higher than the physicals. And I'm not just talking about like, you know, what we currently see with like hit monkey, for example, you know, I think we could probably see uh grail comics sell for a lot higher into the digital side. I mean, yeah. or extremely valuable key comics like Star Wars number one. Like yeah. Star Wars and you, also, you also have to think about that some of these comics on the app are more scarce than the physicals. So, yeah. 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 And like, for example, like, what about that 1977 mid number secret rare for Star Wars number one? I mean, there's, I know there's been offers for, I think, sixty or $70,000 for that comic. And Didn't David no wonder, reach out for that one? Da Didn't David actually commented on it and said, he said, do you want to trade? <laughs> you know, you, you know, you hit the jackpot with David, you message you publicly about trading yeah but, uh, you know, I, I i yeah i reached out to that guy and i i by the way big shout out to him man congratulations what a snipe you got it for yeah. apparently the rumor is five thousand gems on the market wow and i mean i i wow. personally think that could potentially be i mean i it could be a million dollar nft one day if this space takes off the way i think it is it's truly a one-on-one i mean it's the only mint number i've ever seen connected to the publishing year it's also a secret rare uh, it's also the year Star Wars came out, not just the comic. So it's like there's so yeah. many things going for it that are so significant. And I, I told him, I said, people are gonna come to you for offers, man. You're gonna come in. People are gonna come in hot with offers, but diamond hand this because this is like one of the few collectibles I know on the app. It will massively succeed long term. If that if that gets slabbed, we're making something that's not even a one of one. That's gotta have like a half of a half. Like <laughs> oh, he, it can't a, even. It's a super slab. <laughs> It's super I'll actually, take the time to make I, sure that that gets the, the appreciation that it, it deserves. Yeah, he re, oh he actually God. I reached out to him. I said, "Hey man, did you make a slap for it yet?" And he actually already tweeted it out, and he already made a slap for it. <laughs> no way. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. the cool thing is like super rad, people yeah. are so much more willing. Like that's like the that's the, one of the things I love about the slabs is like people are so just. I've never seen I've seen people tweet out I just got X, but I've never seen people just tweeting out regular uh like just look at my comic like that's the mm -hmm. sick sick thing about it is like people are just yeah. showing it off and i don't i don't remember my timeline before no. this labs. no pe people wouldn't be showing like it, maybe if they if they hit like a really good mint number or like something yeah, yeah. like it's just like li little things here and there but not so much like this right and that's the super cool thing is like i want to see your nft like and pe it's just my timeline is just like oh like check this out like check this comic i just got and it's, everyone's just mm -hmm. showing it off and i love that i love exactly. that engagement I could see a possibility, maybe, that you know could end up on a collectible too if people uh, people were interested in that. Yeah, that's, that's <laughs> the reason why not. Yeah, yeah Some collectible collectible slabs. Yeah, collectible slabs. I mean, I don't see why not. Or collectible cases. Yeah, we'll, we'll workshop the name, but yeah, collectible collectibles are getting something. I think I think they could. You think so? I don't. I, I really don't see why not. We just want to take a quick break and talk about our collaboration with Two Cents. We've been releasing our content on their app and we absolutely love it because it allows us to better engage with all of you through voice messages and that you can leave in our episodes. It's also fun for us to hear your awesome comments, but we want the rest of the community to hear them too. We're planning to do a community Q&A for our upcoming episode and we'll be taking your questions through the Two Cents app. So leave us a voice comment on this episode in Two Cents with the questions you want us to answer and you'll have a chance to hear your own voice comment featured on the podcast. Make sure to use the link in the episode details below on how to get that set up on the Two Cents app. So you know what's really interesting, actually? We've gotten a lot of feedback from the community about possibly doing one-of-ones or like or like basically yeah, one-of-one -one slabs for special mint numbers. Mm -hmm. You know, that's yeah. something that we've, we've, we've kind of like th thought about doing as well, but we've kind of, yeah, a lot of people in the community have actually been talking about that as, what are you guys' thoughts on that? I mean, do you, I, you I'm super excited to, to implement that. Yeah, I think it's it's like things like publication year, super important. Um, last mint number, consider that a special mint number. Yeah, things like that. I think that are yeah, they're they're, they're definitely things that I think they they represent a one of one, and they are totally unique and do you know warrant their own special slab. Yeah, 
Yeah, I think it's I think it's big. You know, I think uh, this goes back to having that knowledge of the space. The publication year is an obvious one, um, but there there's there are things like that that people are really looking at looking for in the community and listing it on the marketplace. It's kind of hard to see that. It doesn't stare you in the face, especially you know on the slab. It's obvious, right? It's, it's the name of the comic. It's the it's a publication year. It's super obvious, but unless you're looking for it. You don't know it, and I think that's a super that's a super cool idea that that people can kind of show that kind of luck or 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 skill in terms of sniping it on the marketplace, but like getting that super unique uh, one of one. Like there's there's no other way to put it, right? You, you got a top five hundred, you got a top one hundred, whatever it is. That's awesome. That's cool. That's got extra value. But those one of ones, like there's a reason that that's a one of one, and I, I think that would be a cool thing that we could try to incorporate yeah um, definitely the system. Mm-hmm. and i think the important thing too is for for everyone to understand like what defines a one-on-one yeah i mean for, for us we, we've we've been involved in this market for almost over a year now and we've seen what sells for a premium what we do know sells for a premium are comics that are connected to the publishing year like the mint number the last mint number of a collection and then certain mint numbers like 616 tied to the MCU. So this is specifically for comics. Those definitely, I know for sure, for a fact that all those sell for a premium. So those are three that you can absolutely count on. If we do end up doing one-on-one slabs, you can count on these being for sure in, in that category. Other people have come to us about certain numbers and I'm just, I'm not really sure. And the problem is yeah. we don't really have the data to track past sales, mm-hmm. not yet. And without that, we can't verify this. Exactly. We can't verify anything. Yeah, like That's one of the, the things that a lot of people have come to us are about like palindromes. Some people are, are pretty excited about palindromes. Um, and that's something that, you know, is something we would consider. Um, however, we don't really have the market data yet to, to provably say that those are definitely selling at a premium. Uh, yeah. Whereas some of the other things we mentioned, we, we can prove. I think that making a statement of I don't know and we don't know is so much more powerful than anything else that can be said in the, at this time, right? People, you, you guys are you guys are looked at as knowing what you're talking about and there's a good reason you guys know what you're talking about. And I think that people kind of hope that you'll say like palindromes, like that is a one of one or should be some sort of category of unique. And it's not, you guys don't like palindromes or you don't think they're valuable or it's it's not it's not even saying there's no way right it's not it doesn't matter to us we just care about the publication date it's it's we don't know you guys would rather wait for the data to say okay we see that on average people are willing to spend four to five times what the floor price of a secret rare common uncommon whatever it is and that's how we know that people really are seeking out palindromes but I've personally, and this is just this is just me. I don't know anybody that's that's willing to pay seventy thousand dollars for a palindrome. I know people that are willing to pay seventy thousand dollars for some of these one of ones. I have not. I haven't. I personally haven't met anyone that wants to spend that much money on a palindrome. Maybe it's out there. We just don't have the data yet. And it's so important to root your argument root your your standpoint in something is it is it on faith i believe that pelton drones are going to be really are going to be a big thing or are you basing it on data i see that people are spending four five ten x the floor price on some of these sub 500 mints these very unique numbers that people really seek after and that's that's huge because it means that you're willing to adjust your approach with what you learn if if you guys see pal if i see if you see I think we could, I, if I can speak for us, we can say that if we see palindromes are going for five times what any other thing is going, we see the data. Let's, yeah. let's rock and roll with it. But until we see the data, we don't want to just arbitrarily, then, then it becomes a, an opinion piece. And I think that that's a disservice to the community in the long run, as much as it can make people excited to have palindromes as one of ones. It could be deceiving, right? People see you saying one of one for palindrome and people are spending, people start spending 10x on a palindrome when the market otherwise would never have accepted that idea. Mm-hmm. And that's, that's really important to, to point out. I, I, I just want to take, uh, take the second to, to point that out. Yeah, that's those are really good points. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, what, most importantly too, I mean, this is going to be an evolving process. I mean, we're not like, we're not coming out and saying these three, what we just, what, what I mentioned, those three are, that's it. 
there's no if there's no there's no room for growth that's far from the truth we fully expect people to come to us with ideas but most importantly like right now we do know for sure that the ones we mentioned they are selling for a premium because we've yeah. seen you know we've been we've personally been involved in some of those transactions and we've seen other people advertise those transactions so we know they're legit yeah right. so definitely definitely look out for for those three at the very least in the next version of, of uh, slabs yeah and if we're going to do one of ones i think talking uh without it without any promises but just being open about it, i think that there should be some opportunity for the community to community to try and engage with the one of ones right if there's you know you guys aren't you guys aren't stuck on 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 anything right you guys are open to to new ideas and open to new data and stuff like that if there if there's an opportunity i would love for an i would love for a chance to have, at least let people um make a case for it right whether it's having a conversation or whatever that might be um because there's opportunity out there that not everybody knows everything and and if someone can make a very good case for something i i personally and i think you guys might agree that that yeah, i'm all for it opportunity. yeah 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 definitely and i know that these that these type of slabs are going to be incredibly special so i probably anticipate you know we're, we've we definitely need to talk about this or we're probably going to need some type of verification system that we can internally discuss and, and verify, you know, um, because I anticipate people will just start making their own one of one slabs and that kind of takes away the purpose. So mm -hmm. that's something we'll probably talk more about over time. Yeah, you bring that up. That's a good point. That's something I have been he hearing a bit in the community. Um, I don't know how much you guys have seen it as well. People and, and they make a good point, right? This is a free system. Anybody can access it. Anybody can use it. Um, it's always going to be free, like like we've all said. Um, you know, I, I, being the being the person that that controls the site, uh, you're hearing it from from me. I this is a free service. I I'm not looking to pass on any cost to anybody else. I love the payment that I get is seeing the community excited. That's amazing. That that is that is a hundred percent like that that is the best part of doing that is that people are showing off what they love. People are engaging seeing my Twitter blow up with people's slabs, like is a, an awesome feeling to see that something that we've worked on for five months now, people are very heavily receiving it. That's all I'm looking for on that. Um, the, but definitely, definitely see an opportunity, right? Where people are pointing out, like, I don't know, you know, anyone can make it. And so I, I guess we, sh we definitely should have a conversation at some point, but you know, having some way that people can prove that they have ownership of something, maybe not for everything, but for the things that they're really excited about, the things are really cool, the one of ones or whatever that might be. I think it, it, it there could be a place for it uh, yeah. down the road. Because yeah, and especially if somebody like wants to like advertise a sale, for example, I, I think there's definitely some value in having, having it be verified. And, you know, at least it makes the buyers feel probably a lot better. Right. If I see someone advertising a Marvel comics, number one, and it's, mint number one i'm gonna have some questions and, and i guess you yeah. can do that i hope that people aren't doing that if, if unless it's you know it's just a joke and they just want to yeah. you know, sure go for it you put it up on your wall print it out cool it doesn't doesn't bother me at all but you know for for people that take it seriously that people that you know it goes back to why does the cgc even exist right now why, why does it exist if you can say oh my comics in really good condition well now you have a third party to say you know that that is yours and that is in that condition it, it does make sense yeah. yeah and to add so, to that i actually have seen people actually produce <laughs> marvel comics one secret rare and post it but they joked about it you know it was a joke yeah 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 but yeah that's an example of it but when you actually own like i'm going to use the star wars because it's not it's fresh on my mind when you actually own star wars 1971 right 1977 yeah sorry uh, <laughs> uh that's like that's something that you that's not a joke anymore like you're that's a secret rare of the year of publishing like that is huge and that's you know things like that are, that something to look into at least so question for you guys what stuff have you guys been keeping an eye out on lately what have you guys been interested in lately i I've yeah. mostly comics recently personally yeah i've just uh -huh. been been, uh, there's been a lot of a lot of really good comic book drops that, that have happened over the past past month or so so you know, i've been been stacking a lot of these new comics and uh yeah I feel like that's probably been my biggest focus i i've been personally focusing as much on collectibles i've been looking actually looking at collectibles that to complete sets because of mm -hmm. this dip so because i i really believe in mcp and i think it's going to be a really significant once that drops and over time but as far as comics specifically what comics i've been eyeing i mean 
some of the recent ones, I, I've actually tweeted about this and people know that. <laughs> that was me definitely stacking that, but it's vengeance number one, which is the first vengeance, appearance of America. Shop. Sure. Yeah. I mean, we've talked about this on the podcast. We've talked, it's one of the top 10 modern grails or modern key comics <laughs> phrase mm-hmm. that modern key comics that we were very excited about. And I think that was like number, it was definitely in our top five that we were hoping to see come to VD. Yeah, and it, it, it actually, it was, it was announced after we made the video or recorded the video. Yeah. <laughs> and if you haven't seen those okay. yet. I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah. <laughs> but we, right. we, can, we definitely expect, what they want. Yeah. <laughs> Marvel has been very much aligned with their marketing campaign with these comic books. And we saw the first appearance of Dr. Strange, which is a grail comic and the Strange Tales 110. And then they've dropped America Chavez FA, Vengeance number one. So, and they align that with the movie. So, yeah, I mean, it makes sense. But that comic is, is incredibly popular. We have tremendous faith in her character in the MCU. I mean, we just, I'm watching a lot of marketing campaigns of, of the actor playing America Chavez. I mean, she's like showing off her Lego set, like these Lego toys and like these Funko dolls. And I mean, you just see, it's obvious guys. Like they're, they have massive plans for this character. There's a video game coming yeah. out with America Chavez and also Ruby Williams, who nobody knows much about yet, but she's going to be very significant. Her character's name is Ironheart. These are going to be massively popular characters in the MCU, which will significantly help this comic long term. So when I saw the, the comic when it was dropped, and since we're in a bear market, a lot of people didn't really understand the value of it. And we saw that common, which people bought for seven gems, was dipped under four. So mm-hmm. I, I bought 100. I think I'm at 110 now. But I, I mean, my average price was uh, four to four gems. So four wow. gems. Yeah. So I mean, it's a no-brainer. It was well, a no-brainer. Them up. Give me those. Anybody yeah. want to drop below that? That's okay with me. I'll take I mean, them. <laughs> yeah. these, these are all future Young Avengers. I mean, any future Young Avengers are a safe bet. Mm-hmm. So how are you? Have you guys had an opportunity to actually check out? Um, I know you guys kind of like keep an eye on the on the market for specific collectibles and comics. Are you, have you guys actually had a chance to check out um, the? Uh, the new collectibles, the watch list uh, section on the on the platform on Cherry Charts. Yeah, yeah, we've been checking out a little bit. Yeah, sure. We'll dive into yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, I'd love to. So um, I know you guys. So one of the big one of the big things that I you know personally kind of noted uh, was like there's I don't know maybe at a given time maybe like five, 10, 15 items that I'm kind of eyeing up um, on the on the market. And so one of the things that one of the first things like the original OG cherry charts things is that I got sick of trying to flip between them. And so you can see all the all the collectibles, comics, whatever on the same graph, which is a game changer, you can scale it. So it's, it's linear logarithmic. And so if it's a huge price difference, make it log in and take a look. Otherwise, um, you can take a look at it just in a linear scale. Um, but the next step was so I found myself hopping on, hopping on like, you know, once a day or twice a day, whatever it might be, just kind of keep an eye on things. And um, it was so annoying to like, I, I like, I like to be efficient and just the, like having to take the extra minute or two to add all of the different collectibles to the graph was enough for me to want to make a change. And so I, I wanted to, if, if it's cool, I wanted to kind of show off the, uh, the new collectibles thing that uh that yeah, we just please. put in in uh 2.1 which has been such a game changer for me because i can just the things that i'm really checking out like really really digging on on any, any given week i can just like hop on and pull it up you can have multiple watch lists so you can i sometimes i have a comic and a collectible one or my favorites or whatever it might be and so yeah i'd love to show that off if you guys are, are yeah, let's, 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 let's create today. create a, a watch list live going into the into the tracker so this is obviously uh empty right now this is just a, a, a an account that i don't use on a regular basis so i'd say maybe a test account um so what what type of stuff are you guys uh checking out right now like what, what do you what like comics different rarities collectibles whatever it is what do you what type of stuff have you guys been kind of keeping an eye out for a specific dip or um you know just whatever, whatever it might be Actually, go to Star Wars one comic. I'm curious about that one because that one keeps defying all the odds. Uh, which variant? Um, let's look at the secret rare. Or all of them. Yeah, or all of them. Let's get all of them. So you can get you. So I just made a mistake, but you can just add it, add it to a collection. So we'll say comics and crypto. Create comics and crypto. You can edit right there. 
Um, so Star Wars classic, hero, true believer. And this is and this is out, um, adding them all to the. Well, I wanted to, I didn't want to have to keep uh, accepting the same thing over and over for the collection. So it's it's it assumes that if you're building a collection, um, that it's going to go uh, all to the same collection unless you change it. Nice. <clears throat> so these are the five Star Wars. Anything else you guys are keeping an eye on now? Um, let's th throw Vengeance in there because we were we were just talking about it. Yeah, let's see that. Um, which one all of them uh, let's let's do like let's do common and secret rare how about that classic and true believer hero okay is it is it cool. is it true believer the secret rare? true believer oh you said secret rare sorry yeah oops <laughs> We throw both in though. Why not? There we go. Why not? Yeah. So yeah. So these all go into if you if you go into any of them, they all go into the collection that that CNC collection. Um, the the way the reason that it's built in this way is that I want it to be like super useful. So for me personally, I have like a collection of like never ever ever will I ever sell. I have a collection of like things I might sell, but I'm not sure. Um, I have a collection. I'm holding onto a couple of collectibles for some family. So just hold. So I have a separate collection for that if you have kids that, that you can have you can track all of their individual collections in here so you can um uh you can go in to the the fine collection and you can have molly sarah kyle you know everyone can have their own collection in here and you can just mm -hmm. pull it up it'll instantly pull up all their data uh, you'll see like this this section up here you'll be able to see their unrealized profits for that specific item um, once you pull it up, I just, I didn't, yeah, th this, this, that is one of my favorite features in all of cherry charts is being able to load in your purchasing price and being able to see what your, your unrealized, your unrealized profit and losses. Like it, for, for me, like just, I don't know, I don't know for a lot of people who are buying a lot of collectibles and comics, uh, especially if you're getting like special mint numbers, things like that. Like for me, it's super complicated, like trying to go back and figure out all my data. So like, you know, some mm -hmm. things I bought off the marketplace with gems, certain things, you know, I've purchase you know discount gems for us then you have to think about that certain things i've you know sold crypto specifically to buy collectibles and you know so i have all these different transactions happening in different places and to be able to you know condense it and have be able to see it all here in one place is it it's one of my favorite things about all charge charts yeah and i don't know if i don't know if um if you've seen this i i didn't tell you guys about this so um there's they all we also just added a sold tracker so whenever you sell anything, oh. you'll also be able to see your, your realized PL and it'll show you all that your huge. historical data too. So you'll be able to see when you bought it, what you bought it, where you bought it, um, what and then what you sold it for. And you'll and like you can see here, if this was populated, um, it'll say, so I'm just gonna add, you know, an arbitrary number. I'm just gonna say you bought it, uh, you purchased it from the Mark, uh, you purchased it from the market at, market at the seven gems. You can put as little or as much data as you want. It'll tell you for each individual item what your in, unrealized profit losses. So you and it'll be green red. So it's really easy to find. You can sort by it so you can see what you have the most or the least profit on. And so it's just a really like like some, uh, Spencer was just saying. It's like a really easy way to just kind of get a hold on all the different things you bought. Uh, if you bought like a lot of them, you can add you can add a hundred like. <laughs> For uh, people like Sean, for, I had in for mind. Sean, yeah, yeah 110. You can put 110. The classic Vengeance covers, yeah. <laughs> the serial number doesn't matter to you. You can just put 110 in, and and it'll track the value of all of them, which was super cool. And if if you have 110, you can also view it in the duplicate tracker. And that way, if you have 110 of them, you don't see all 110 of the same thing, um, in the same space. Uh, but we want. I wanted to really show this off. This is the. This is the the thing that I was just talking about in terms of the being able to track everything, uh, especially because I'm particularly lazy when it comes to trying to look at repeat things. You can go into your collections. The second that you add it, it immediately loads. And you can go into your collection and hit that. And instantly, you're going to see all of the data for, for that. You can change it between the things and your and, and you know we don't have a ton of data on this. But if you have, especially for things, you're going to see a huge you're going to see a huge graph here and it's going to load all of your data in one click. 
just so every time if you have your your 15 favorites or, or 50 favorites I I don't think I don't think that there's actually a limit to I mean I think you can load 100 collectibles on here if you want to in, in a in a given set or you know if you own 50 if you own 50 or 100 different collectibles and you want to just see what every single one of your collectibles is doing at that time you can make a collection of your favorite stuff and then just load it up or of all the things you own and just load it up right from here in your collections tab so i and same thing here in cherry picks the exact same feature you know you can just load up your your collection and see exactly um what's That's happening awesome. on one day two day one week two week whatever whatever time That's frame so it might be yeah and and just super consolidated whether it's stuff you own or stuff that you don't own and so this has been super exciting for me to put out. Um, and I, I hope that you guys are, are uh, if you haven't already, take, a, take advantage of it because I've, I've been really enjoying the feature so far. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's incredible. Yeah. And it goes to, um, and I think this, this kind of um, coincides, I know you definitely talked about it in the podcast before, Sean, but I think this is a good opportunity to talk about the, the blue ocean, red ocean. Um, people see, see, people see the prices. You saw a comic at four gems, you know, what, I think that it's definitely something to put in people's minds, right? We see we see the price shoot up, and I see the volume actually absolutely nuts in terms of the amount of transactions that are happening at these incredibly premium prices. I mean, um, all time highs. There there are huge differences in terms of uh, what's available on the market and um, the prices, um, and it's interesting, right? You'd think the higher the prices, the less people want it, but it's, it's, it's weird, especially in the crypto market. We're seeing the more something's more people are listing something for the higher the price, the more people are willing to, to pay. And I, and I definitely think about your, your blue ocean, red ocean, which I'd never heard before in, in times like this. So uh, one word FOMO. <laughs> <laughs> FOMO is a powerful thing, man. And that's what the yeah. blue ocean, red ocean uh, tactic is. So is so wonderful because it helps you understand market trends, right? Or the blue ocean, you know, it's the depth, the idea behind that is the waters are calm. You know, the fish aren't going crazy over, there's plenty of food to go around. So there's no need to fight, but the red ocean, there's blood in the water. You know, there's only a few little bits of food and the fish are going crazy. And right. that's the idea with the market trends, right? When people, when something's in very high demand, people will go after it and they'll, go after it and spend a premium for it and it's all happening instantaneously um whereas you know blue ocean it's not the same way at all um, and that's where you want to identify like blue ocean books or comics or even collectibles potentially with massive upside so i love for my, my, my favorite investments are investments with safe floors with big upside and that's what's like vengeance number one i mean it's an incredibly popular comic but I also see the upside with her long term, you know, as right. a, involved in the MCU, which helps drive up values for a lot of these FA comics. So for that reason, it was it's a safe floor with big upside. And right now, it's a blue ocean book, at least digitally. Re right. Physically, it's not. It's definitely a, more of a red ocean book. But it's yeah, exciting. I think, about, I think about this a lot in an analogy, right? Like, uh, you you kind of take this ocean analogy and you put it into the real world and there's there's two different parts of an oat there's two different parts of a, of a lake or an ocean or something and all of the other boats are on this one part of the lake or the ocean and you're you and a couple of other friends are the only people in this section and you're you're asking yourself are the fish worse here are they smaller or you know do, do they know something i don't know and then but but really you're 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 picking up fish at five times the speed that they are because every like you know that the demand is not there so you you assume that there's something wrong with the decision you're making. Um, but if you're doing your research, right, you, you take the time and do the research and this is where the, where good fish are and, and a good opportunity and stuff, that, that red ocean where everyone is, it's, it's almost, a, the way I see it, almost a false sense of security because you see everybody else is buying this. So I, like you said, FOMO, I should also be buying this right now. And what happens is that last person hops on and is like, man, I don't really want these fish. These fish, these fish are not, meh. They're kind of small, yeah. They're not, they don't taste that good. And then everybody moves out. And if you're the guy that's stuck with the tiny fish, or paid or or spent way too much time with this analogy fishing that one particular fish, you kind of get the short end of the stick because unless you're the guy, the the last guy who's like, 
oh, I see way too many people over here. These, these fish are starting to stink. I'm, I'm getting rid of them. Unless you're that, that person, it's a drop off from there. And so that's, that's the cool thing is if, when you are really, really secure in your investment, you know why you're getting into it. You've done your research. You know the value of it. You've seen what's happened. You're getting in at a good time in that blue ocean. That's like a really sweet place to be if you're confident in your investment. You should definitely be confident if you're investing in anything. Definitely. And that was another example of uh, whales, like whales coming in and buying comics like crazy because that definitely is a good example of a red ocean comic, right? So if a whale comes in and buys a lot, and it manipulates the market, right? Because it pushes the value up and people FOMO into it. It's happened. Right. I've seen it happen. It happened recently with uh, Strange Tales 110. I mean, I, I knew the, the comic was incredibly undervalued because, I've, again, I've been preaching that it's a grail comic. Um, and I was around like, I think about 600 gems or 700 gems or something like that. And I bought two of them. And then I saw the price just overnight go up to like 1,800 to 2,000 gems. And I'm like, this isn't, this isn't normal. This isn't, this is something's going on. People are buying not right now. And I right. think a lot of it is probably because the whales are scooping things up. And mm -hmm. then I, I sold it. I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm going to sell it. So I sold it for, I think, 1,800 or 1,900 gems. And now it's dipped back down to like think about 1,000 gems. And that's a perfect example of understanding the market trends because it was, it was obvious that whales were coming in to buy this comic because long-term it's going to do amazing. So even buying at that price, I'm still very confident in that comic long-term, Strange Tales 110. But I, I just saw it happening. I knew it was going to dip back down because of that reason. The funniest is when I see somebody post in Facebook or Twitter, like, hey, I just bought 10 of these. Does anybody know why the price is going up? Because I saw the price going up, so I bought it. But I have no idea why I bought it for this much money. <laughs> have, you, have you guys seen that? I've seen it a couple of times. Like, does anybody know why this is going up so quickly? I just bought 10. Like, I just, it kills no, me every time. <laughs> That's exactly the reason. That's exactly it. Yeah. 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 That's wild. That blows my mind. <laughs> yeah, every time. So I thought I thought it was a good, uh, definitely a good thing to to bring up, especially kind of in this time where we're seeing some things that, you know, four months ago people were like, oh my god, if I had an opportunity opportunity to buy Walt for under ten thousand dollars, I would do, I would give an arm and a leg to buy Walt for under ten thousand dollars. Yeah, exactly. An and, 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 yeah, and it's way below that right now. I think it's at seven five, something like that. Around. That's wild. That's wild. We're recording. Yeah. Very crazy. I never, so do I never you thought still believe in the Disney IP. Do you still believe in the value of, of Mickey of FA Mickey Mouse and, and Walt Disney? Uh, you know, that hasn't changed. That that yep. information is still changed. Brendan Cherry, you are a effing saint. Thank you so much for coming on today, man. We covered so many amazing topics today, and I'm so excited to to update everybody on things we're working on and continue to work yeah. on. Thank you guys both so much for having me. It's been it's been nothing short of a pleasure working with you guys since the it feels like the beginning of this journey so uh this is a long time coming so glad we got to do this and uh, i you know i hope we get to another chance to do it soon but you guys will be here for me soon We're, we got some good things to work on for the for the community make sure to awesome. use his make sure to use his website cherry cherrycharts.com and also make sure to follow him at cherry charts nft on twitter and if you haven't slabbed yet and you got some good comics you want to show off cherrycharts.com slash slabs let's see them make sure, you tag, make sure you tag me get on those slabs yes <laughs> i love it <laughs> all right everybody thanks so much for joining we'll see you on the next one don't forget to stay awesome and remember f the moon let's go to mars music is by nine finger make sure to check out their music at ninefinger.com and you can follow them on instagram at ninefinger999 be sure to check them out and send them some love